So today I'm going to be walking through how I made this Barbie inspired outfit with a reversible bodice. I've tried to keep everything as beginner friendly as possible as always and the two patterns that I used will be available in my Etsy which is linked down below. I think that's everything so let's go on with the tutorial. So I'm going to start by making my bodice which is going to be roughly based off this waistcoat. So I have my two fabrics, one in this gingham, this is a cotton and then one in just the plain pink. This is is a cotton poplin. I'm hoping that they're going to be fine on either side of the bodice. So for this project you will want two different fabrics, one for each side with little to no stretch. You want a woven fabric for this. And then in terms of materials I'm also going to be using this kind of metallic star ribbon and I got all of this from Minerva. I'm also going to be using some eyelets. I'm not going to be using these ones in particular because I've ordered some pink ones specifically for this that haven't arrived yet. Um, but if you wanted to use this one, this is from Minerva and these are 55 millimeter eyelets. I'm also going to be using two different types of interfacing. I'm going to be using this one that comes in kind of ribbons. Both of these are fusible interfacing, which means that when you apply heat, they will stick to whatever you have them on. And then I'm going to be using these kind of sheets of fusible interfacing as well. You will only need this one if you plan on adding the pockets. I'm also going to be using pins, some fabric scissors. You can use anything to cut out your pattern pieces and fabric pens to draw out my pattern pieces. So the pattern that I'm going to be using for the bodice is my Barbie pattern naturally. So I have pattern piece one which is the centre front. So for each fabric I'm going to be cutting two of these, one in this orientation and then one in this orientation. I'm going to do that by folding the fabric in half. So in total I will end up with four of these, two in each fabric. That is exactly the same for pattern piece two, which is my side front. So again, I'm going to have one in this orientation and one in this orientation for both fabrics. So again, I will have four of these, two in each fabric. I have pattern piece three, which is my piece for the back. And this is going to be cut on a fold. So once I draw it up against the fold, I'm then going to open it out and have a piece that is twice as big as this piece here. And I'm going to have one in each of my fabrics for that one. And then my final piece is my pocket piece, which is pattern piece four. This is completely optional whether you want to use this or not. So now I'm gonna to start to draw out my pattern pieces and cut them out. So I have my piece of fabric here. I have the fold here, and then I have my selvage edge up at the top here. So the selvage edge is the bound edge of your fabric as opposed to the edges that might be fraying a little. So I've placed both of my selvage edges on top of each other and folded it like that. So my selvage edges are here and then my fold is here. So now to place my pattern pieces, I'll start with pattern piece one and you'll see here that I have a grain line marker and this wants to be parallel to my selvage edge. Now I tend to do this quite roughly, but if you want to make sure that this is perfect, you can measure from each end of the arrow to make sure it's even. So you want to line that arrow up with your edge. And the same with pattern piece two. Just lining this grain line up to the selvage edge. And then pattern piece three wants to line up to that fold at the bottom. And then your final piece is your pocket piece, which again has got a grain line arrow. So now I'm just going to draw all of those pieces in. So I've just finished drawing all my lines in place. Hopefully you can see that. Now I'm just going to take some pins and pin within all of those lines just to make it easier to cut through both layers at the same time. And once the pins are in place I'm just going to go in and cut them all out. So I've just finished cutting all of my pieces out and removing my pins. So this is the piece that I have for my back which was obviously cut out on this fold. And then for my front and side pieces, I have my two pieces for the front, one for each side and the same for my side pieces and then two of my pockets. So now I'm going to start to add my interface into the back of each of these pieces. 
as you're doing this, you need to make sure that you have got one for each orientation. So for example, if I add the interface in behind this one, I need to make sure that I add it behind this one in this orientation rather than this orientation, or the pattern won't fit together properly. So the way that I like to add my interface in, so this is my interface in, and I have the glue side, which is the kind of textured side facing towards me. And then I can take my piece and lay it on top of that glue side. And then I like to just lay them out in the orientation that I need them, just to make sure I do it on the right side. You can also just decide to go in with your pattern pieces again for your interfacing, but I find that this is the best way to get the interfacing to be the accurate size for each piece. So now that I've got a few of my pieces laid out, the only ones that you don't need to do for this part are the pockets. Um, I'm just gonna take my iron and iron straight over the top of these, and then I'm going to cut them out so that the interfacing will be the exact same shape as the piece that I'm attaching it to. So now that I have my interfacing added to all of my pieces, I'm just gonna add my marks for where I'm gonna add my eyelets. So I'm gonna take my pattern piece, I'm just going to use something to push through a hole where my eyelet marks are on the pattern. And then I'm going to use that pattern to draw in those marks. And then just flipping it onto that side and drawing them in over here as well. And then I'm going to put these to one side just while I prepare my pockets. So now these are my pocket pieces. Like I said, you can skip adding pockets all together if you want to. Um, and again, once you lay them out, make sure that you are keeping in mind that you need one for each side. So now I'm going to use my interface in and I'm just going to cut some thinner strips because this is going to be a bit too thick. So I'm going to cut down it straight down the middle once, and then I'm gonna cut down each of those again, just to get some nice thin pieces. So now that I have these thinner pieces cut out, I'm just going to hem all the way around the edge of this using my interface in. So I'm just gonna take a piece of that interface in, lay it just at the bottom edge, of one of my pieces and then fold that edge up and over the interface in and then I'm gonna press that in place with my iron. I'm gonna do that all the way around all four edges. So just with each one putting the interface in up to that edge and folding it up and over itself like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for both pieces. So this is how my pockets look once I've folded over those edges. I've tried to aim to do this at about six millimeters or a quarter of an inch. Around about there is good. And I'm just gonna sew a straight line across this top edge just to secure that hem in place. You don't need to do it for any of the others because you're gonna be using that to attach it to the actual top. But for now, I'm just gonna sew a straight line across here. So I've just added those two stitch lines to the top of my pockets and now I need to add them to my front pieces. So I've got both of them here and now I've just drawn a guide onto this pattern that is going to tell me where to add my pocket. Um, I didn't have it on the original pattern because I wasn't 100% sure how I wanted to do this part but I'll make sure that this guide is on the actual pattern so that you can follow it. So now I'm going to take this tool again and poke a hole in each of the corners of that guide. And then I'm gonna use those holes to mark onto my pattern where I want that pocket to sit. So I'm gonna use a pink fabric pen to do this one just in case you can still see it once I attach my pocket. So I'm just going to use my pen to mark in those corners. 
and then I can use them just to line up my pocket and pin it in place. I'm going to do the same for the other side. So now I'm just going to sew around all of these edges except the top one with a straight stitch. So this is how that looks once I've sewn around the edge of my pockets. And now I'm going to go in and repeat all of those steps since the beginning of the video pretty much for my second fabric, which is my gingham fabric. So these are all of the pieces that I've got in my gingham. I've got my one back piece, which was cut on a fold. And all of these have got the interfacing on the back as well. I've got my two front pieces in opposite orientations and both of those have got the pocket attached as well. And then I've got my two side pieces. So I've got exactly the same pieces in the gingham as I had in the plain pink. So now I'm going to start to attach my pieces together. So I'm going to start with the side piece and the front piece. I am actually just going to go back to the plain pink just because I think it'll be a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to take one of my two front pieces in the plain pink and then the corresponding side piece. So this is the one that's kind of facing towards the same piece. And then I'm going to pin them together along this seam. This can be a little awkward because you are pinning together two curved edges. So you will probably want to use quite a few pins for this. And now I'm going to sew along this edge with a one centimeter seam allowance and a straight stitch. So just right along here, and then I'll be able to open it up like this. So now that I've sewn these two pieces together, I'm just going to press this seam flat. I'm just gonna use my iron and press that open like this. So I've just pressed that open and I've gone in and repeated all of those steps for my remaining pieces as well. So then I'm gonna grab the same piece in my gingham fabric and I'm gonna lay these right sides facing together. I'm just gonna pin these together. I'm gonna pin them together along this neckline, along the front of the bodice here, along the bottom edge, around this armhole. And then I'm just gonna leave the top of the strap open and the side down here. So now that I've got that pinned in place, I'm just gonna follow around here with a straight stitch and one centimeter seam allowance again. So just around the neckline, down this front, along the bottom and around this armhole here. Just leaving open the top here and the side. So now that those edges are sewn in place, I'm just gonna take my scissors and go around each of these curved edges and cut some small triangles in and into the corners like this. So just around where the edges are curved, this is gonna help it fit a little bit better. So I'm gonna do around the neckline, around the armhole, and then along the bottom here. So I'm literally just cutting out these tiny triangles all along these edges. Just make sure that you don't cut through your stitch line. So I've just finished cutting all those triangles around the edges, and now I'm gonna turn this to the right side out. So that should look something like this. So we've got the gingham on one side, and the plain pink on the other. So I've just pressed this with my iron to help it sit a little bit flatter. And then I've repeated all of those steps for my other pieces as well. So now I've got one for each side of my bodice and now I can move on to make the back. So this is gonna be a very similar process. So I'm just gonna take my two pieces for my back and lay them one on top of the other with right sides facing together and I'm gonna pin them together again. This time I'm gonna pin them along the bottom edge here, along the armhole and along the top of the back here. So the only two places that I'm gonna be leaving open again are gonna be the sides and the top of the strap. So now I'm just gonna go in and sew each of those lines in place with a straight stitch and a one centimeter seam allowance. So I'm gonna do the armholes, the top of the back here and then along this bottom edge here. So now that I've got those edges all sewn in place, I'm gonna do the same thing with cutting the triangles around the edges. So I'm gonna do around the armholes and then around this top seam here. So is it really gonna be the same thing again? 
just cutting these small triangles just to improve the fit of any of the curves. So just like that again around your edges. The only one I'm not going to do it around is along this bottom one here just because that's a straight edge. So I've just finished adding all of my triangles around the edges. Now I'm going to start to attach my front pieces. So I'm going to place these inside of the back piece. I want to make sure that the right fabrics are facing each other. So here I've got the pink facing the pink and the gingham facing the gingham. So I'm just going to put this right inside here. And first up I'm going to match up the straps. So I'm going to pull the strap from the front piece up through the strap of the back piece. I'm just going to pin that in place and then I'm going to do the same thing with this side area as well. Just pin in that in place. So now I've got that first piece pinned along the top of the strap and along the side here. And then you can just see it kind of peeks out here. Now you can go in and sew this before you add the other one in place. It can sometimes be a little bit easier if you sew this one and then add your second one in. But I'm just going to do them both at the same time. So I'm just going to kind of fold this first one out the way. And now I'm going to add in my second front piece in exactly the same way. So this is how that looks once your two front pieces are all pinned inside. Um, it will be kind of bulky. Yeah, but that is fine for now because we're going to fold it all out at the end. Um, so now I'm just going to sew down each of these lines that I've pinned. I'm going to match up this line with the line that I've sewn up here around the armhole. So I'm just going to sew straight down. Again, a one centimetre seam allowance and a straight stitch. So just down these sides and along the top of these straps. So now that I've got all of those seams sewn in place, the top of the straps and down the sides, I'm just going to unpick a small hole here to turn the bodice to the right side out. Now I would recommend reinforcing the stitching on either side before you do this. So I've just sewn over the top of this stitch line with some more of the straight stitch just to make sure that not too much of this comes undone. So I'm literally just going to unpick this and then use that to turn the bodice to the right side out. So then once you have this hole, you just start to gently push the bodice through. So this is how that looks once it's all turned to the right side out. Now I just need to close up this hole that I just made and there are two options that you have for doing this. You can use a ladder stitch by hand if you're not sure how to do a ladder stitch, you can go to the end of nearly any of my videos and I do them in there or you can just type it into YouTube. It's a very, very straightforward stitch. Or you can do what I think I'm going to do is to add a top stitch and close up the hole with the top stitch. So I'm going to follow around all of my edges just with another straight stitch as close to that edge as I can. And when I come to this hole, I'm just going to kind of fold it in on itself and sew along there. So I'm going to come all the way along this bottom edge, up the front where the eyelets are, around this kind of neckline area. And then I'm also going to go around the armholes. Obviously, you can do a top stitch wherever you like on this, but it is handy for closing up this hole and it is completely optional you can leave it off entirely I quite often don't add top stitch to any kind of bodice like this but I think it will be a nice addition to this kind of style so I'm just going to go across the bottom up where the eyelets are round here and then round the armholes just with a straight stitch as close to that edge as I can so I've just finished adding all of my top stitch in and closed the hole up in doing so. Now all I need to do to finish the basic part of the bodice is to add my eyelets and this is the kit that I got. I got this from Amazon. I have never used this before so I don't know how good it's going to be but these are the eyelets that I'm going to use. It's kind of like a dark pink. I do also have 
more of a baby pink, but I think I think the darker ones will be a little bit better. And then it's the kind of punch hole type of eyelet device. I don't know what to call this. Um, so I will report back if this is any good. I'm gonna do this off camera just because it's very loud because you have to use a hammer. Um, but just use whatever kind of eyelet kit you can get your hands on for this part. So I've added my eyelets. I did try to use this kit, but the hole punch that comes in this kit just would not go through the fabric. It managed to make a hole in the kitchen floor, but not through the fabric. So I gave up with this kit and just went back to my favorite kit for eyelets and just used these silver ones instead, which I think actually looks fine. So now this, can be done if you want it to be you just add your lace in but i'm just going to add a few extra details so i'm just going to cut these stars up and then i'm just going to add them up here and on the pockets and i'm also going to cut out a thin piece of fabric to put across here just to kind of give the illusion of this kind of lapel area so I'm just gonna add the fabric here and then add some stars so for the pieces that i'm going to place across here i've just measured this area and added a little bit either side to hem it and then I've cut out a piece that's about an inch wide which is going to allow me to hem each side so using my interfacing to make it easier just gone in and folded each side kind of around itself like this just to make a tube and then I folded in each end to fit here so this is the one that I've already made just fold it over the ends and fold it over the edges at the sides. And then, like I said, I've just measured it up with how to fold over the ends. So it's gonna fit something like that. And I'm just gonna go in and sew a straight line up each of the edges, up each of the long edges. So I'm just gonna sew a straight line up this side and then a straight line up this side. I'm not actually gonna attach this to the bodice by sewing it on I'm going to use interfacing again just so that I can stick it on top without any stitching coming through on the other side so I'm just going to go in make my other one of those and then sew them so I've just finished sewing both of these pieces literally just sewing a straight line down both edges and I'm going to attach them to my bodice so to do this like I said I'm just going to use some of my fusible interfacing so I've cut a couple of pieces of that that match the shape and size of the fabric pieces. So I'm just gonna lay that on top and then I'm just gonna find roughly where I want to place them. So I think that feels about right. And now I'm just gonna press it in place with my iron. So I'm just going to take my iron and press that straight on top of there. So now that I've got these two pieces in place, they are not perfect by any means, but I don't think you're going to be able to tell when I have it on. So now I'm going to start to add my stars. I'm going to do that in exactly the same way with some interfacing. So I'm just going to cut some small squares of that interfacing, put them under the star and then place it where I want that to go and then obviously I'm going to press that in place again with my iron so I'm just going to fill this area I think with about 10 stars on each side just pressing them with the interfacing each time so now I'm going to move on to making the dress which is going to be a very basic jersey skater dress so this is the fabric that I'm going to be using this is a four-way stretch 95% cotton 5% elastane so anything similar to that will work fine and I got this from Minerva I'm also going to be using pins fabric scissors to cut out all of my pattern pieces fabric pens to draw out all of my pattern pieces. I'm also going to be using some flat braided elastic. This is five to six millimeters wide. This is optional but will give a little bit of extra structure to the top and then I'm also going to be using 
some fusible interfacing just to finish off the hems. In terms of the pattern, I'm going to be using my Lola pattern for this, just with a couple of alterations. So I have the high neck side of the top. I'm going to be cutting two of these out, one for the lining and one for the main dress. I also have my scoop neck side of the top. This again, I'm going to need two of these, one for the lining and one for the main side of the top. I have my pocket piece. I'm going to need four of these cutting out. And then I also have my skirt piece. I'm going to be making this mini dress, but I'm going to do it even shorter than the mini dress line that I've got in place here. So I'm probably going to cut it about an inch or two above where my standard mini line is. And I'm going to be cutting two of these in total, but I'm going to be lining one of these straight edges up to a fold, which means that when I cut them out and then open them up, they will be twice the size of this skirt. So they'll make one for the front and one for the back. So I've just finished drawing out most of my pieces. The only piece that I've not been able to fit on here is the higher neck side of the top, but I have some more fabric I can do that for. So I have my fabric folded in half and my fold is up there. And then you can see I've drawn my skirt on that fold. So now I'm just gonna put the pins within each of the patterns and cut them out nice and carefully. So I've just decided as I was about to cut my skirt out that I want them to be a bit fuller than this pattern. So I'm just going to draw that top line for the waist in. And then I'm gonna kind of pivot this out. and draw a new line in. Just to make it a bit more full. And now I'm gonna just try and join up. The line at the bottom. Do you wanna make sure that it's the same length as it's supposed to be here. Just join them up. So I'm just going to repeat those steps for the second skirt as well, do it in exactly the same way. Obviously you can just keep the skirt as it's meant to be, I just wanted mine to be a little bit more full. So I've just finished cutting everything out, so I'm going to go through all of the pieces that I've got. So this is one of my two skirt pieces, and like I said, because this has been cut on a fold, I'm just going to open that out. I am a bit worried that I've cut this just a little bit too short, um, but we will soon find out. So I have two pieces that I've cut out like this. I have four pieces for my pockets. It's going to be two for each side of the skirt. And then for my tops, I have two for the high neck side of the top. This is going to be the back of the dress and one of these is going to act as a lining and I have two for the scoop neck side of the top. This is going to be the front of the top. So the first thing I'm going to do is take these two pieces and lay them right sides facing together, one on top of the other. This particular fabric doesn't have a right or wrong side but if you are working with a fabric that does you want to make sure that they are with the right sides facing towards each other. I'm just going to take some pins, I'm going to pin around the armholes, around the neckline, and then finally just along the bottom edge. So now I'm just going to sew along each of those edges with my overlocker, you can also use a zigzag stitch. So I'm just going to go around each of the armholes, around the neckline, and then along this bottom edge here. I'm not going to be sewing along the top of each strap or along the sides. So I've just finished sewing around the armholes and the neckline. I actually realise you don't need to sew along this bottom edge because this is where it's going to attach to the skirt. You can sew along it but you don't have to so I'm just going to leave that without the seam at the moment and now I'm just going to go in with my flat braided elastic. Like I said at the start this is completely optional. But I'm just going to sew that straight on top of my armholes and my neckline. So just straight on top of the seam that I just sewed. So to do that I'm just going to place one of my armholes under my machine and take my elastic and place that right on top of that seam. And I'm just going to use this finger to guide it around 
making sure that I don't stretch it as I'm sewing this on. And as I come to the end, I'm just going to trim that elastic off and then sew the rest of the way to the end. So the elastic will look something like this and then I'm just going to repeat that for the neckline and the other armhole. So this is how that piece looks once I've added the elastic and I've just gone in and repeated those same steps for my high neck side as well. So now I'm going to take the round neck one and turn it to the right side out. So now I'm going to take this round neck one and place it up inside the piece with the higher neck. I'm just going to match up the straps and pin them in place. And same with the strap on the other side. And then I'm going to do the same with the side seams, just matching all of those edges up. So now that I've pinned down the side edges and at the top of the straps, I'm just going to sew down those edges with my overlocker, you can also use a zigzag stitch. So this is how that looks once the two pieces are sewn together. I'm just gonna turn that to the right side out. At this point, I normally like to add a top stitch. Um, I like to do this before I add the skirt just because it's a bit less hassle. So if I was adding a top stitch, I would just sew straight around the neckline and then straight around the armholes as well, just with a zigzag stitch, just staying close to the seam. I'm not going to do it for this one in particular because obviously I'm going to put in the bodice right over the top but that is an optional thing that you can do if you want to. So just following straight around the edge with a zigzag stitch. Now I'm going to move on to making the skirt. So just taking one of my two skirt pieces I'm going to take two of my pockets and just line up this straight edge here with the straight edge at the side of the skirt and line up the top of the pocket to the top of the skirt, which is where the waist is. So I'm just gonna pin that in place. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. And obviously this fabric doesn't have a right or wrong side, like I said before. If your fabric does have a right or wrong side, you just want to make sure that you have right side spacing together here. And now I'm just gonna sew both of those in place with my overlocker. Again, you can use zigzag stitch. So I'm just gonna sew straight down that edge. So this is how that looks once I've added the pockets. I'm just gonna fold them out and I've repeated all of this for my other skirt pieces as well. So I have another one of them and I'm just gonna lay that right side facing down. So we've got right sides facing together with my other piece. Now I'm going to pin them together at the edges. So I'm going to pin along the top of the pocket, around the pocket, and then down the side of the skirt. I'm going to do that on both sides. So I've got those edges pinned in place, and I'm just going to sew along the top of the pocket, around the pocket, and then straight down on both sides. I'm going to do that with my overlocker. You can use a zigzag stitch as well. So now that I've got those two skirts sewn together, I'm going to add my top to this. So I'm just going to open that out. I'm going to keep the skirt inside out, and then I've got the top the right way out. I'm just going to place the top right inside the top of that skirt. And I'm just going to go around and pin the top around the skirt like that. I'm going to start with the side seams just so that I know that I've got those lined up. And I'm just going to continue doing that the rest of the way around. So I've got the skirt and the top pinned together here. I'm just going to sew around this with my overlocker. And as always, you can use a zigzag stitch as well. Just finished sewing that top in place. So now the only thing I've got left to do is to hem the bottom edge of the skirt. So to do that, I'm just gonna be using my interfacing again. So I'm just gonna take my interfacing and place that at the bottom of my skirt and fold the hem up over 
the interface in and then just press that in place with my iron. I'm gonna do that all the way around and then I'm gonna secure it in place with a zigzag stitch. So I'll press it and then I'll show you how it looks before I've sewn it and then I'll sew it in place. Just show like a slightly zoomed in version. So I'm just gonna place the interface in there, fold it up and then press it in place and do that all the way around the skirt. So this is how my hems look when they're just pressed in place with the interface in. So that helps them stick. And then I'm just gonna go over the top of that with a zigzag stitch. So then the hem looks like this once I've added my zigzag stitch and then the dress is finished. <laughs> <laughs>